Okay, so uh, now we will do some specific examples of uh, the kinds of problems we were looking at in the introduction. We'll start with number three. So they give us this expression, 15 multiplied by some number, by the number x. When we write a number right next to a variable, the operation that we're doing there is understood to be multiplication. Could have been anything, but we just through the course of history have decided that it will be multiplication. Not addition, not subtraction, but multiplication. So 15 times some number. Well, that number they're telling us will be 4. So 15 times the number 4. That's 60. So this expression, when x is 4, is worth uh, 60. Uh, I'm going to use that word a lot this year. Okay. Uh, what's the worth? What is this this value or what is this expression worth? Um, it depends. You know, when x is four, it's worth sixty. When it when x is two, it's worth thirty. When x is whatever, then the, it, then this thing is worth what? It's worth something. So um, when I talk about the worth or the value. Okay, of this expression, that's going to be our basis for something called a function. Okay, it's going to be a little ways down the road. You don't have to worry about it, right? I'm not going to talk about a function anytime. Uh, well, not incredibly soon, but but soon enough. Um, but the idea of changing out this x for different values and seeing what comes out, put something in, and you get something out. Uh, that's going to be the basis of something called a function. So. Um, these are really important. The worth and the value, whatever um, type of word we use to say, what is this going to be? What number is this going to be uh, equivalent to when we change out x? Okay, enough of, of that babbling. Let's look at number 6. 1.6 minus g when g is 1.2. Um, so 1.6 minus g, and g is... 1.2, and that'll be worth 0.4. All right. Number 10. T divided by 5, so some number divided by 5. Well, that number that we're dividing by 5, uh, for this moment in time, we're going to let it be worth 4.5. So 4.5 divided by 5, uh, that's 0.9. Uh, so 4.5 is pretty close to 5. 5 divided by 5 would be 1. Uh, 0.9 is pretty close to 1. So uh, that's a, a reasonable sounding answer, uh, which is a useful skill to have uh, and a practice uh, to to make into a habit. Uh, you know, is this answer reasonable? Does that make sense? Uh, so just a little tip there. Next, we'll do number... 16. That's in the next little section of problems. 12. And then we put this little 5 up here. This is in a place called the superscript. We have the superscript up here, and the subscript is down here. So if you have a number up here in the superscript, that means uh, that we're using it as a power. So 12 to the power of 5. And this just means you know, this many factors of of what? what? What are the factors? The factors are 12. So this many factors of 12, five factors of 12. Um, and that's what they're asking us to do is um, write it in words. So in words, this means 5 factors of 12. What would that look like if we use mathematical symbols? It would be 12. Uh, usually, nowadays, we'll use a dot to represent multiplication. Or we could use parentheses. And we typically won't use an x, right? Because now x's are variables a lot of times. x is your go-to variable. Um, 
and so we'll get away from using that as multiplication. Um, but in words, this means five factors of 12, and if we use mathematical symbols, it could look like this or that, or we could write 12x, 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 12x. Uh, using x as a symbol that means multiplication, but uh, we're just going to move away from that. Um, next, um, we're not just going to write it down, we're actually going to evaluate the power. Uh, so number 27. So we have 10 to the second power, that's 10 times 10, and probably know that 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, just evaluating the power. 29 is 11 to the third power, or 11 to the power of 3, uh, and that's going to be 11 times 11 times 11. Okay, and uh, I, I think for watching this video, you deserve a little, a little trick to learn a little trick. Uh, so if you're going to multiply a number, any number, of any number of digits by 11, here's what you do. Uh, if we're going to do 11 times 11, that's what we'll do first, and then we'll multiply that by 11 for the third time. So 11 times 11, how do you do that? Well, uh, you're going to take 11 and multiply it by 11. So we'll take the, the two uh, numbers, the first and the last number. Those are still going to be the first and the last number of our answer. And now what we're going to do is take these two numbers and add them together, and we get the middle number. 1 plus 1 is 2, 121. Okay, and now we want to multiply that by 11. So maybe you didn't quite understand what I did there, so I'm going to show you with this next problem. So this is 11 times 11, so this is 11 times 11 times 11, and that'll give us 11 to the third. Uh, so the first and the last numbers are still going to be the first and the last. Okay, so the first is 1. The next number right here is going to be 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, the next number is, okay, not 1 plus 2, but we then move on to the next pair of numbers, 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 is also 3, and there we are, the last number is 1. Okay, so 11 to the third is 1,331. Just to give you another example, 11 times um, 2, 1, 7, uh, 2, 5, okay. So I'm going to multiply this number by 11. Um, and this is another thing spectacular. If you were to uh, you know, write this in that, the typical way of uh, 21,725 times 11 and, and do that whole thing like you're used to, you'll find out you know, this is no surprise. But it's a nice little shortcut. Uh, first number is 2, last number is 5, because first number is 2, last number is 5. Uh, and the next number is going to be 2 plus 1, that's 3. Next number is going to be 1 plus 7, that's 8. 7 plus 2, that's 9. 2 plus 5, that's 7. And the last number is 5. Uh, so a cool little trick, that's 11 times 21,725 is 238,975. Um, anyway, that's just a little aside. A nice little trick for multiplying by 11. Okay, we'll move on to number 38. x squared when x is 3 halves, or 3 fourths, excuse me, 3 fourths. Um, so now we just have a variable expression, or an algebraic expression, with uh, the idea of a power there. So we're just going to let 3 fourths uh, go in there and replace x. So we have 3 fourths squared, which just means two factors of 3 fourths. So 3 fourths times 3 fourths. And we should definitely know how to multiply fractions together. That's just straight across. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. There you go, 9 sixteenths. That's x squared when x is 3 fourths. Uh, number 40. Uh, that's x plus y. So I said before, algebraic expressions can have multiple variables in them. So uh, here's an expression where we have an x and a y. We're going to let x be 11, 
and y is going to be 6.4. So 11 plus 6.4 is 17.4. So that expression is worth 17.4 when x is 11 and y is 6.4. All right. Um, last problem we're going to do in this video for this section uh, is going to be a quote word problem. Uh, but what's what's math without uh, being able to apply it to a, a situation? Right, that's what we call word problems. Um, all right, so it says the perimeter of a square. Before we even start anything, I I really hate that, uh, and I do hate it that math books just tell you stuff that you could you could figure out. So. Uh, we're just going to start with the perimeter of a square. Um, what is the perimeter of a square? Um, so I'll ask that question again. What's the perimeter of a square? Uh, well, it's, it's just all the sides, uh, side lengths added together. If you were to walk all the way around this, if this were like a fence or something, and you added together all these lengths, uh, that would be the perimeter. So what's the perimeter of this square? Well, it, it kind of depends, or it varies. Uh, it's a variable. Uh, it depends on, it varies uh, with respect to what s is, right? If we let s be the value of a side, uh, then that would make sense that we would use s. s is a good choice for, for this variable. So it, it varies depending on what s is. Okay. Well, let's just say um, we want to come up with an expression that uh, tells us what the perimeter is if, we, uh, if, if I were to tell you what s was. Right now you don't know what s is, uh, but if I did tell you, uh, you would easily be able to figure it out. Because you would say, well, this is a square, so this is whatever. This is 4 or 5 or whatever. If this were 5, this would also be 5 because it's a square. So this would also have a value that's the same as this value, and, and this would be the same. And, and all four of these sides would be s in length. Um, so the perimeter would just be s plus another s plus another s plus another s. Okay, And uh, there we have it. We just add it together four times. Or we use a multiplication to say repeated addition. Four s's added together would just be four times s. There are four of these s's, and, and how much would that be worth? Okay, so this right here is the thing that it kills me that they tell you that. Uh, it just takes the um, thinking out of the problem, uh, I don't know, and, and that really drives me crazy. Um, there's no reason that they should assume that you don't know how to find this. You're smarter than, than needing to be told what it is. Anyway, so the perimeter of a square uh, with a side length of s is given by the expression 4s. So we just figured that out. Um, what is the perimeter of the square shown? So they, they show us a square that looks like this. The side length is 7.5. And of course, if this is 7.5, then this is 7.5. And we just add this all together or multiply this by 4. So 4 times 7.5. Right, this just goes right in there. Um, Get out the trusty calculator here. That's 30. 4 times 7.5 would be 30. So if all these side lengths were 7.5 and we walked all the way around, we would have walked 30 whatever feet or, or meters. That's actually a given. So 30 meters. Okay. Um, well, that'll do it for the example videos. Uh, just remember an expression. An algebraic expression is one that has a variable. You change it, that variable is, uh, is worth, and then it changes the worth of the expression. Um, all right, well, hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.